tools. First of all, this uh, webinar will be recorded. Uh, I just started the recording right now. So um, if you find this fantastic, interesting, and uh, you thought one of your colleagues absolutely should have joined this webinar, I hope that's going to be the case naturally, um, then it's going to be recorded. So uh, feel free to, uh, to send it to anybody that, uh, that you would like. We're going to put it on our YouTube channel also, where you can see a lot of the other webinars we've run during the last couple of years. Um, lastly, um, you have a little webinar app. In that, um, you have the possibility to uh, ask questions. So feel free to, to do that as we go along. I'd be more than happy to, uh, to respond to them. Uh, and I'll see if I can fit them in uh, as soon as you ask the questions. And uh, if something comes up, yeah, just raise a hand and ask a question. And we'll take it as we, uh, as we go along. Um, also, we'll uh, keep uh, the line open um, when we uh, go to the end of the webinar. And you'll also be able to ask questions when we, uh, when we get to that. Okay, so um, let's kick this off. First of all, just a short introduction of myself. My name is Lasse. I am one of the owners of uh, Increase. Um, it's been working with uh, the Eloqua platform and the Oracle Marketing Cloud for uh, five, six years. Um, I have the absolute pleasure of working with some of the biggest companies in the Nordics, helping them to uh, build the business cases for implementing, uh, implementing uh, marketing automation. We work with the processes around this, and we also help design organizations to support real more modern customer strategies. So that's my, uh, my role in, uh, in general. I spend a lot of time with, uh, with customers, which also gives me a fantastic insight into uh, what customers are actually struggling with. So um, that's me. Um, actually, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll spend, uh, I think, two slides on who we are, and that's going to be the very shortest part of this presentation. Um, we're here to speak about automation, not so much about us, but uh, just to let you guys know that we more than just uh, you know, myself in this company, so we're about 32 people in general. Uh, we do nothing else than uh, work with the Oracle Marketing Cloud. We're specialized in, uh, in that and been working with that platform for many years. Uh, we're represented in uh, all of the Nordic countries and uh, uh, you know, do anything from the marketing strategy behind deciding to implement uh, technologies to support a, a personalized communication process. Uh, we also design the uh, omni-channel infrastructure, so how do we really support the, the communication. And lastly, but not the least, we also work with the actual data and the implementation. So we have uh, solution architects, uh, developers, uh, do integrations with just about any sort of, uh, of CRM platforms, etc. We've been so lucky to have been awarded the uh, Specialized Partner of the Year by Oracle and, uh, and uh, have a very, very close cooperation with, uh, with those guys. And uh, I'm not sure if there's any, uh, if there's actually any um, Oracle people on the line, but if there is, um, oh, I see uh, Ulf saying here that uh, he can't hear, hear anything. Ulf, uh, have you turned on your speaker on your laptop? <laughs> but uh, see if, uh, if that is, um, if that's done, please let me know if you still, oh, sound is okay now. Thanks a lot. Okay, so um, just to uh, sum up a little bit of, uh, of that, uh, Naturally, like any other company, we work with a lot of different uh, uh, customers, and uh, as you can see from our references, it's um, medium-sized enterprise uh, customers, anything from B2C, B2B, B2B2C, um, and most of our projects actually start out by helping our customers define the customer lifecycle from the starting point where how do we generate interest and all the way through a retention and cross-sell and upsell and trend prevention and all of these different elements. So to be able to support the customer's buying process, through the whole uh, platform, we need to have technology and data and processes pull, uh, on it, uh, on it um, in place. So we start out by defining the full customer journey, uh, breaking that into what data needs is, is actually needed, designing the technology and the infrastructure and the, the process needed to really uh, activate this, and then implement it all and, and uh, document the, the effect of the, um, of the projects. So that's sort of the essence of, uh, of our company. Um, but I want to spend some time on just setting the scene while so many customers are actually looking into implementing automation platforms. And one of the reasons for that is that we've, you know, as a, as a company in general, we've uh, spent the last five, six, seven years on really trying to tune uh, our sales machine, right? So we've made the most, uh, you know, furious and efficient, at least we've tried to do, a uh, sales machine. So we really tune the way we drive uh, business with our customers through the financial crisis. And there's been a lot of focus on that the last year. People have uh, implemented CRM platforms. And I don't think many, uh, many companies today do not have a CRM platform. I think most, uh, most have. But re what's really re re interesting and relevant with this is that we might have made an efficient, lean, mean sales machine. But in reality, 
uh, what has happened is that the surroundings has actually changed very much. So the way customers are actually purchase today is completely different set of uh, uh, set of, of purchase patterns that we were used to. But most of the companies we meet actually try to sell and drive marketing the same way that uh, we've always done. Also, I might have taken social media or social selling or whatever into, uh, into account, but really trying to understand how the customers are buying. So what we see in most companies is there is a huge potential, and actually Gartner and Forrester and all these big uh, research companies also state that the biggest untapped potential most companies has is aligning sales and marketing and being much more efficient on how we drive business to, uh, to our companies, how we drive revenue and profit. So we've set ourselves up with a lean, uh, mean sales machine, but the customer's purchase patterns has completely changed, which makes it really, really um, difficult for us to be effective in the way we, uh, we sell. There's a lot of reports also documenting that the effectiveness of, of sales resources are actually dropping quite a bit. We also have reports that says that in 2020, we will have 30% less salespeople than we actually do today. And this is also a, a trend we see with the customers we're actually uh, working with. So um, one thing is, is how we internally are set up. But as I mentioned before, and I, I'm sure you've been in the uh, other webinars or in events where these numbers are standard and you'll find any number in any webinar that states the customer purchase patterns has really changed and it is affecting the way that we uh, we drive our business so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on discussing percentages because I think most companies know that we have to adapt to the way uh, customers are purchasing but I think I want to I want to try to uh, to put this into perspective and take in to I'll give you a little story from a random company. Naturally, this would not be something that happened uh, with you guys. Maybe something that happened, uh, you know, other places in Europe. Um, but let me give you an example of how things are actually working in in most companies. So the context of this little story is that marketing has executed a new product launch, and the board expects to get a presentation of the result. So there's a board meeting, and our uh, marketing manager comes in and uh, says, you know, guys, we've just uh, uh, done with our new website, giving a status on, on what's going on in marketing, right? We're almost done with implementing our new website. It, it looks really good. We're going to go live in a few days. We're also launching a new Facebook page as a part of our social strategy. That's also looking really uh, interesting. Uh, we're looking to gather up a lot of fans, etc. And uh, as you all know, we launched our new product uh, 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 just about three weeks ago. So we sent out uh, communication to 5,000 people. And uh, I think the campaign has probably been the best campaign we've ever run. We've had an open rate of 37% and a click rate of uh, 9%. And, you know, it was a really, really fantastic uh, campaign. All in all, I think we generated just about 1,000 leads to sales. So marketing manager being, you know, really positive, And I think this is a, it's been a fantastic campaign and it went really well. So on the other side of the table, the CEO is. And, you know, I'm, I meet a lot of marketing managers and this is a... Uh, um, a little, little bit black and white, but this is our, our, our biggest uh, opponent, right? <laughs> because he will ask stupid questions like, oh, that sounds really good, but uh, uh, Mr. Marketing, can you tell me how much revenue you actually generated? You know, that's the question we hate, right? Because you can't really document revenue, can you? So um, Mr. Marketing, he says, well, yes, it's a little bit hard to say, you know, I've, uh, I haven't gotten any feedback from sales yet, but uh, Cern, the sales director, he's also in the meeting, so Sir, we could ask you, you know, we've forwarded all these leads to you guys. Uh, tell me a little bit, how much uh, revenue did you actually generate? And the CEO says, well, sir, uh, give us some input on that. Sounds like a good campaign. How much revenue did you do? And if there's any sales directors on, on this uh, webinar, I'm sorry that the sales guys had uh, this sort of position. It's not to, uh, <laughs> to say that you guys are lazy, but uh, that's just how the, <laughs> the sculpture looked. So... Um, so he comes up and he says, you know, I, I can't really tell you yet. I, I need to hear my sales people for status. However, you know, what, I've, what I have heard is, uh, unfortunately, the, the quality of the leads was not very, very good. And to be honest with you, you know, I don't think the leads has, has generated any revenue directly because, as you know, we're, we're already speaking to many of the customers. But uh, Mr. Marketing, uh, could you send me the mails that you've actually sent out? Now, and, and marketing says, but, but listen, didn't you guys conduct a follow-up day? I don't understand how you can say that the leads has low quality. It's been the best performing campaign that we've ever had, right? So marketing and sales being a little bit misaligned here, which naturally would not be something that would be happening in your company, right? Well, uh, sales director, he says, no, well, it's just not what I hear. I hear they haven't generated anything. So uh, the CEO gets a little bit tired of this discussion and says, stop, stop, stop. Guys, you're talking back and forth. There's only thing, one thing I need to know is how much money did we spend on this campaign? What revenue did it generate? 
CERN sales directed, did you follow up on the lead? Is there any real quality in these leads that, uh, that was generated? You two guys have to figure out what is the result of this specific campaign. I want to know, we invest money, do we generate profit and revenue, or was it a waste of money, right? So this is a uh, naturally a thought out uh, story, um, which would not align with you guys, but with some other companies that we meet. Um, and often this is, uh, this is one of the issues that we, uh, that we encounter. So what is this all about? We call it the 12 rounds of boxing between marketing and sales, because often marketing has a perception that we deliver quality leads, but sales don't follow up. They're lazy, right? But if you go to sales departments and ask them, they would say, well, you call that a lead just because somebody clicked on a link or submitted a form or they joined an event you guys uh, arranged. That's not a lead. You know, people have much more complex uh, purchase patterns. You're wasting my time. And the real issue here is that there is no common understanding with inside the company of what is a lead actually. So this is the currency that sales and marketing has to align on. And there's so much potential in just defining internally when is a lead specifically ready to go to sales and what would sales uh, call to action be? What would their commitment be to marketing from a follow-up perspective? Because when you have those definitions, you can also associate an expected revenue out of a lead and then marketing can start to say, okay, we generated a potential revenue of X million euros um, or X uh, thousands of euros uh, because we generated this many leads. So there's a huge gap between sales and marketing in most organizations. And we meet some of the biggest companies in, in the Nordics. And this is uh, often uh, the case. Um, so this was just to set um, the scene on some of the issues. So We've set ourselves up for a specific way of driving sales and marketing, with sales being the leading part of this. Um, we've, uh, you know, we, we, we engage in a, in a world where customers' purchase patterns has really changed. And we have an internal struggle also of aligning sales and marketing. And by focusing on these elements, there is a huge potential for you guys to, uh, to really release. So there are technologies that can support this journey. Now, technology doesn't do it by itself, naturally. So if you think about, you know, ineffective marketing, then buying new software doesn't make it suddenly become much more effective. So if you do what you've always done, you will get the result that you've always gotten, right? So it's not about just buying software. It's really about changing the processes, aligning sales and marketing, and speaking about what is a lead, actually, and also very much about developing the competences in the organizations. Um, we have a lot of dialogues with our customers about organizational changes also because um, if you think about uh, how marketing departments often is structured, then it, you have an email marketing manager, you have a social media manager, you have a website manager, etc. But maybe we should consider actually aligning ourselves into the customer buying process. So in marketing, do we have a manager that's responsible for generating new names? Do we have a manager that's responsible for uh, converting uh, new names into uh, actual leads? That's a, a marketing manager responsible for upsell and cross-sell or retention. Um, so by aligning ourselves with the customer's buying patterns and buying process, um, we get a much more focused uh, marketing department also. Well, we're going to have a different session around that uh, a little bit later in a, in, a, in a month or so, where we'll speak about the modern marketing organization. So for today, it's mainly focused on um, you know, standards of uh, the marketing, um, the marketing uh, automation platforms. So I just want to position uh, Eloqua and Oracle's Marketing Cloud, um, which is the platform we specialized ourselves in. And actually, there's a reason why we specialized ourselves in this, because you, know, you, you will find any Gartner Magic Quadrant, uh, and they will all show a little bit different tendencies. So once in a while, Oracle might be here or there or whatever. But what is the common uh, denominator in all of these uh, Magic Quadrants is that Oracle is always up in the right-hand corner. Um, which means it is a market leader. So it's the platform that has the broadest perspective of features. It's the platform that supports uh, customers uh, with a very, very uh, interesting uh, GUI. So it makes it really easy to work with. And it's also, even though it's an Oracle platform, then some of you might think, oh, well, I have Microsoft uh, CRM, I have Salesforce, I have whatever. Well, uh, Oracle purchased Eloqua uh, some years ago, back in 2012, and, and it's a completely open platform. So there are standard plugins to all of the major uh, CRM vendors, and we've done integrations with uh, any of the um, the bigger uh, CRM platforms and also a ton of custom integrations. So what is this actually all about? So um, there are five main things that we support when you think about marketing automation. And one of the key elements 
if you want to drive more quality leads, higher volume of leads, aligning with sales and marketing, is really to start to understand your buyers. We need to understand what our buyers are actually doing to be able to know what communication would be the most relevant to send at the right time. So from a software technology perspective, that's what we call digital profiles. So we need to start to generate digital profiles. Because if you think about this, uh, internally within your company, you will probably have data in a ton of different data sources. You'll have an ERP platform where you have a purchase history. You might have a CRM platform where salespeople update information and update opportunities and maybe install base and change uh, permission setups, etc. You might have an email marketing platform where you will store information on hard bounces, soft bounces, uh, you know, who opened which emails and all of those different things. Um, you will have external data sources, so maybe you've uh, bought data or, or continuously integrating data from Dun & Bradstreet or you know, the data.com or whatever. You'll have a website where people submit forms, right? You're also storing information about who submitted forms. You might have social elements, so you have a Facebook uh, a group or LinkedIn uh, groups, etc. cetera. Um, so you have data all over the place, and it's in many cases, it is in silos. So for you to really become an effective marketeer, that drives modern customer strategies. It's really about trying to consolidate this data into a centralized platform that you can then use to, uh, to communicate from. And this is one of the really, really strong uh, uh, parts of the Oracle Marketing Cloud and Eloqua. It's really to integrate and consolidate the data and build digital profiles. So one thing is more you know, hard data of purchase history and demographics. One of the things that really is changing the way that we communicate to our customers is to be able to tap into the customer's digital behavior, not from an IP address perspective that we know somebody from Volvo was on our website, but we have no clue who it is. What can you use that for? But really tap into the individual behavior. And we try to dive into that for just a second. Then let me just see, I have a question here. Um, Ulf asked a question, does Soho mean the new inter uh, integrating Soho Sales IQ and Soho Campaign or old stuff? Um, uh, let me get back to that, uh, Ulf, because I need to get a little bit more information from you on, on that question. I'll uh, come back to that when, uh, uh, when we're further down the, um, uh, the, the presentation. Hope that's okay. Um, so as I said before, we want to really try to tap into the digital behavior of, uh, of our customers. Um, so usually when we track campaigns, you would be tracking the January campaign or the product X campaign or the newsletter campaign or whatever it might be, right? Uh, downloads, open rates, searches, clicks, all of those different things. And we'll do that across, uh, across different timings. But what the essence here is, is that me as a potential customer, I don't care about your February campaign. I might be in the market in April. You know, I might go across channels, across medias, across campaigns. So what we can do with the Eloqua platform is track the individual behavior, bring that into the centralized platform, and combine that with your demographics. So we track the individual behavior across all of the medias that you actually own, across the platforms, across your campaigns, across your website, anything that you own, we will track the individual behavior. Now, the way that works is, uh, and some of you might know about cookie tracking, um, but the way this works is that the first time you visit, uh, for instance, increase.dk on our website or one of our uh, group websites, uh, we will put a cookie on your machine. And from that day on, that cookie will be tracking anything you do on any of the medias that, uh, that, um, that we own. Our websites, our blogs, uh, you know, the emails, our newsletters, everything we send to you, it will be tracked how your behavior are on those. Now, from the first day, naturally, you're only a cookie ID, right? So we just have a cookie and a cookie ID. So the only thing you need to do is actually to submit a form like you did when you joined this webinar or open an email that we've sent to you. Then the, the, the platform actually connects the cookie ID with the email address. And then inside Eloqua, we know who you are and we can then track everything you do across the platform. So to give you an example of how much we can actually see, now this is my own profile inside the platform. Um, and um, there you go. this is my own profile inside the platform. So you can see that I had 799 website visits. Um, I have 28 form submissions. If I had searched something on Google or Bing or Yahoo or whatever, it would have said the, last, the search term I had the last time when I entered our website and which search engine I used. And down here, we'd be able to see when that actually happened. So if I want to dive into more details, I'll be able to click on the 799 and it will show me every single thing, 
every single web page that I visited. When I visited this, you can see the screenshot here is actually from August 20, uh, August 6, a couple of years ago. Um, but it shows me everything that I did in until that uh, screenshot here has been uh, has been taken. Um, and if I want to see this specific website, how that looked, I can click on that link and it will show me the web page and I can click on preview and see that. Now this is naturally a screenshot, but it's an interactive uh, um, it's an interactive uh, platform naturally and uh, this means that this can reside inside your CRM system so think about this from a sales perspective if I log into my CRM platform and I want to call one of you guys I would know now everything that you have done so my call could be timed correctly so I know that if you had not responded to anything in this complete period, it was all blank, and then suddenly we get a lot of spikes because you join a webinar, you figure out, oh, that marketing automation is pretty interesting. Who's that company increase, actually? So if you go to our website afterwards and you start looking at our blogs and see we have you know hundreds of, of blogs that you might find interesting, start reading those, then we start to build the digital profile. And then I know when I have to call you, okay, you looked very much on the blogs we've made on lead scoring, for instance. So maybe you're into lead quality. So when I give you a call, I know when to call you and I know when, when what I want to speak about. So it really gives us a lot of insight that can help the uh, um, the um, uh, the sales resources time their call and make them more, uh, more relevant. So what we spoke about here is how do we create digital profiles, really creating a, a combination of the digital behavior and the demographics that uh, we will be bringing in from CRM platforms, your ERP platforms, or whatever systems that uh, that you might have. Now, how can we then use this digital profile? First of all, we can use it to identify potential revenue with inside your target group. So how is that done? Well, it's really done with target and segmentation. So as a part of the platform, there's a whole segmentation engine, which will be used for marketing. Um, now, remember, this is a platform for marketeers. It's not a platform where salespeople would log in. They would just still, still just stay in the CRM platform. So as a marketeer, you would log into the platform, and in the segmentation engine, you have a completely simple drag-and-drop uh, element where you can combine the digital behavior and the demographics. So, for instance, we could make a segment that says anybody that has visited our website five times within the last two weeks and are not yet a customer of ours, which has the title of CMO in a company that has more than 500 employees, for instance. Give me that segment. I would click Save, and it would tell me, well, there is 523 people that matches that criteria. So we can combine that and get a segment right away uh, that tells us, okay, for this specific target group, uh, there's that many people we could communicate to in the database. Now, that's one way of using the segmentation engine of proactively trying to identify potential customers. But we also have the ability to make trigger-based uh, segments, which means that you would set up a profile, which in our case could be if you have the title of CMO, you're in a company uh, with more than 500 employees, um, then I want to automatically put you into a campaign where we trigger communication on different channels. So what does that give us of options? Well, we monitor your behavior, which gives us then the option to be correctly timed when we send out communication. Because today it's often a you know, spray and pray communication, right? We plan a campaign, we send it out on Thursday because that's when the, the content is ready. But in this case, we will send out the content on the day that you are actually in the market, right? Because your behavior showed us that you're in the market at, at the current time. So it gives us the, uh, the possibility to be uh, you know, timely uh, correct by triggering uh, communications and combining behavior and demographics. And remember, the behavior is across all of the channels that you own. So we build digital profiles. We use that to create uh, target and segments. Now we have these segments, and actually we need to use that to engage our customers and prospects. So in the platform, we have a full set of uh, communication tools. So it is a true cross-channel communication platforms platform, which means that we could trigger communication through email, we could send you an SMS, we could push a message into your app, um, if you have one of those, if you have an eShop that has an app, we could push a message through the app, we could send it to offline, we could uh, personalize banners on some website, so there's a lot of different ways of, uh, of communicating. Um, and um, this is naturally used to support 
the complete customer journey, right? So if you go back to one of the slides that I showed you in the beginning, we design the full customer journey. We identify what data and what processes is needed. And then we implement the technology to really support that once you submit your uh, your form the first time, we put you into a welcome program automatically and send you uh, communication teaching you about Increase and Eloqua and what this is all about. Once you've uh, uh, showed um, uh, interest enough, we might you might put you into a justify phase. You know, customers like you have done the following. They have uh, earned the following ROI and all of these different things. Now, if this was an eShop, then maybe first time you registered on the eShop, we put you into an education program teaching you about how to get the most value out of our eShop. Now, it could be retention. So if it has been three weeks since you logged into our eShop the last time, we want to automatically trigger a retention program. The lesson we miss you, you're usually on our, on our website twice a week, now you're not here anymore. Has something changed? Or sending me a, a very interesting offer based on the purchase history that I've, uh, that I've shown you guys uh, before. So the way this works is that we're able to personalize the content that is being sent out. So if you were the marketing manager or the sales director or the CEO, well, the content in the email or the uh, the channel we want to communicate in would be personalized and relevant for you guys. And the second element is that the platform has a very, very easy to use GUI, which is a drag and drop interface where you uh, design the customer's journey, right? Now, the screenshot I have here in the middle is from an introduction campaign we ran ourselves for, uh, I think it was just a year and a half ago, two years ago, something like that. Where we gave out a book for free to sign up new uh, to sign up new customers. Maybe some of you have actually been through this. Let me just give you an example of how this is uh, this this uh, program actually ran. So uh, again, as I said, this is drag and drop. So this is a segment that's running automatically in the background, like I showed you in one of the earlier slides. That says anybody that has submitted this specific form, where well, you could get a free book, a hard copy of a book that's called the Digital Body Language. Um, so once that was happened, you would receive a confirmation email. Your email would be on its way uh, shortly. So we would wait uh, a couple of days, and then you would receive an email from one of our sales guys that has automatically been associated to you as a potential contact that would say, if it was from me, it would say, uh, Dear Lasse, I've uh, noted that you've downloaded, the, uh, you requested the book. I've just spoken to our, uh, our coordinator, and it is on its way. You should receive it within a few days. Now, my name is uh, whatever. Uh, I'm an account manager with Increase. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. By the way, uh, this is our fantastic blog. Here's a few links to some uh, interesting articles. Nothing yet with you know diving in and grabbing the phone and calling uh, the customers. Hey, I saw you submitted the, the book. Uh, are you in the market for marketing automation? Because you are not at that stage, right? And you would get, be getting an annoying sales guy. We just want to warm you up and introduce you to the market that we're working on. So once that's been sent, we waited a week, and then a new email was, was sent out where we sent out um, uh, an email that started out with, you should have received your book by now. I hope you're going to enjoy it. Um, we are a company that does blah, blah, blah. Here's a link to a very interesting report that's called Dare to Compare, which was a report that uh, where, they, uh, where a research company called Serious Decision has um, investigated uh, the, the best performing sales and marketing organizations and identified the 10 things they have in common. So that's sort of a report that would be interesting to study, right? Maybe we can get some inspirations. The best of breed, what are they actually doing, right? So naturally, we monitored whether you downloaded that book, uh, sorry, that report or not. So if you didn't download it, you know, it would wait a week, and then you would receive a new, a new email from the sales guy that received an email from up here saying, well, we send you that email. I just checked. I can see you haven't downloaded the report yet. It's a fantastic report. Uh, you should really download it. Here's an option for you to uh, to read it. Once that was done, we put you into a standard flow where we sent you a, a mail every second week approximately with interesting elements around um, around the uh, uh, the marketing automation market and what uh, options are, are available on that. And remember, with, with our discussions on digital body language and digital profiles, um, we monitored all of that on the back end and we do that continuously. So we know if you showed interest. Now, we know if you downloaded all of these and clicked on the links and went there on our website and started to engage, etc. So based on this fairly simple campaign, we started to identify which of these 2,500 people that submitted this form showed the most interest. So, um, you know, we're 32 people, so we have three sales resources. Spending their time to call all 2,500 
uh, customers that submitted it form would just be a waste of time, right? So we nurtured people, you know, give them a digital massage, and then on the back end, we identified, okay, these 50 people are actually the ones that are showing the most interest. The rest of them are not, uh, are not responding. Okay, so let's call them, giving us at the same time the digital uh, uh, view that I showed you early on. And um, so we know when we called you, well, you looked at lead scoring, the, another guy looked at segmentation or whatever it might be. So it really gives us the opportunity to create a customer lifecycle that can be automated, personalized through the channels. And now this, this, in this case, it was only emails, but it might as well have been pushing messages through, uh, through other channels, right? Um, so I hope it gives you a, an example of how uh, you can use the platform to really uh, qualify this. Now, naturally, you cannot sit with every single campaign manually trying to identify which customers are actually in the market right now. Because in this case, we had two and a half thousand people submitting. We also have customers with two million contacts in their database. You know, and for them to sit there, you know, you have to hire 10 people just to identify leads. But luckily enough, <laughs> there is also functionalities and features that can support you on that. So how can we really qualify the leads um, through the sales resources uh, and align sales and marketing to really create an effectiveness? Like I said before, we want to tell sales, these 50 people, those are the ones you should be uh, speaking to. Now, as you remember in the start of this presentation, we spoke about the, the gap between sales and marketing and the, uh, the need for defining what is a lead actually. Now, there's uh, really a, um, a critical set of features here that is uh, important to, uh, to investigate because there's so much potential in getting this right for, for companies. If you think about the amount of money and time and resources that is spent on sales and marketing, generating leads that are not being followed up and uh, you know all of those different things, there's so much potential in working with qualified leads. Um, so oh, I'm sorry about that, guys, because you have this in uh, Danish. I hope that's okay. At least I'll, I'll speak in English still. So in the platform, we have also a lead scoring engine. So the lead scoring engine actually gives us the possibility to monitor the best fit. So which customers actually match us the best? So if you think about our company, well, uh, usually these sort of platforms are for companies that are uh, you know, have a broad, broad customer uh, space or are very specific on, uh, on uh, a spe a specific business needs. So we want to monitor customers that fit our company the best. So that would be companies that has a certain size. It might be you know, X amount of, uh, of revenue or be number of employees or specific industries, or it could be specific sort of people. Now, that should, naturally, this is marketing automation. So as you can uh, probably guess, the primary contacts of our platform, uh, of, of our uh, the contacts, uh, the people that we engage in, is the marketing people, right? So if you have the title of CMO, you might be a better fit for us than if you have the title of account manager, right? And that's one thing that we monitor. The other thing is the interest. So the number of website visits and the form submissions or the email click-throughs or whatever it might be. And by monitoring both of these, we get actually a scoring model that gives us an opportunity to really identify which leads are in the market right now. So if you think about this, we have a scoring model that uh, monitors the fit criteria. So if you have the title of CMO, we will give you 25 points and move you up to C. If you at the same time have more than a thousand employees, for instance, then we might give you another 25 points moving you up to B, right? If you also are in a specific industry, then you might get even more points, right? So by having that information, we can identify how well of a fit you are to the products and services that we have. On the other side, we monitor your interest, as I said before. So every time you visit our website, well, you will get five points, for instance, moving you a little bit along this area. If you join a webinar, we might give you 25 points. If you, after the webinar, go back to our website and start doing elements, well, we give you more points, which means that we'll end up with a scoring model that puts you into different categories. So if you think about this, then all of the ones that are A1, B1, A2, B2, we might want to send those to sales because it is the perfect fit on customers. And you've shown enough interest to tell these guys to, to really show us that you are probably in the market right now. So what we can do when we do integrations is, for instance, if you have Salesforce or MSCRM or Oracle CRM or whatever it might be, then we will automatically trigger a lead being created in the CRM platform, 
send a notification to the sales guy that is responsible, telling him that an A1 lead is ready for you. In that email, there would be a link they could click on, taking them directly into the CRM platform, where they will see the digital profile that I showed you in the beginning, right? So what this did Lasse actually look at? Oh, he was on these parts of our website. I can see he's shown a lot of interest. So do you think a sales guy, he would be much more motivated for calling an A1 lead than an Excel sheet with, uh, you know, uh, 500 people that has clicked on a link in an email? Now, I know the answer for that question, but is it is not much harder than that, than aligning sales and marketing. What you need to define naturally is, what does A1 mean in your perspective? What is the number of employees or existing customers or new customers or whatever it might be? And those are some of the workshops that we do with our customers, defining the sales and marketing process and aligning sales and marketing around the leads going into. Leads going, <coughs> sorry about that, guys. Leads going can also be used for a number of different things. So if you think about A3 and A4s, right, that is customer that is a perfect match that has just started to show interest. So they are really in a critical phase, right? If we have sales call them too early, we'll be pushed back. Um, and if we don't start to communicate to them in this stage, we'll end up with uh, leads that they might go cold or we burn the lead, right? So we might want to take anybody that hits the score of A4 and A3 and put them into a specific uh, nurture program. We might want to take these guys and treat them in a specific way. Maybe we want our sales director to call those guys because it's C-level management or whatever it might be. We we'll also take the lower part of the lead scoring engine. So you might have customers that are D1, D2, so they show a lot of interest, but by looking at the data, currently they are not uh, the right fit for us. But that might be because we don't have data, right? So if we don't have the title because you've not submitted that on a form, well, then we're not going to give you any points naturally. But you might have very warm leads that are a uh, very good match They're just laying down here. So, for instance, if we say anybody that has the score of D1 and D2 that has blank data on title and employees, we want to put you into a data harvest program, asking you for more information, automatically moving you from D2 to B2 and A2, etc. So it gives us the option of really trying to segment and trigger communication into different sorts of, um, sorts of flows. Hope that uh, makes sense. Um, so the last element, we've now built digital profiles. We have a platform uh, all in the same uh, in, uh, interface where we can do target and segmentation. We have another part of the platform that can trigger uh, and uh, send out campaigns uh, via different channels. On the back end, we will monitor the behavior across website, forms, emails, you know, all of those different things and align sales and marketing with a lead scoring engine so we know when to send sales and integration will support us in uh, making that uh, automated, automatically creating leads, giving the salespeople an insight into the digital profiles. Um, and the last element is then how can we then document the results of this investment that we've done in marketing automation? And inside the platform, there's a full BI system also that can analyze and report on the effect of, uh, of the campaigns that, uh, that we're running. So uh, in this, oh, sorry about that, guys. So I'm going back. Uh, in this platform, we have uh, just about 100 standard marketing reports. You also have the option of designing your own reports and dashboards. Um, and these reports will tell you anything about, for instance, the database health, right? In the screenshot, we have 924 contacts. Uh, 543 of those are actually reachable. So there's a lot of those that are not reachable. Okay, maybe we should do something about that. We can look at how the number of new contacts are increasing or decreasing, how their engagement rates are, the field completeness. So what data do we actually have on these? Or the email frequency. So how many contacts has received one email with inside the last two months? And we can get these sort of information out of the platform. We could also look at the lead scoring dashboard. So I showed you that on a PowerPoint before, but you can see this actually measures up to the same element, right? So um, on this, we can monitor how many contacts do we actually have that is uh, A1 and A2, etc. If it, And if I were to click on 34, I would get those 34 contacts out and I could send that to anybody that, uh, that I wanted to put them into a campaign or whatever, right? Um, you also have uh, trend reports. You also have closed loop reporting. So if we integrate with uh, any of the major CRM vendors, uh, MSRM, Oracle Naturally, and uh, Salesforce, etc., we can bring in the opportunity revenue that the sales guy uh, enters into the CRM platform. So we generate a lead, they convert it into a 
an opportunity and puts in a value on that. And we would connect that with the campaign that uh, that you have run that has generated the lead. So you'd be able to show what is actually the potential revenue of this specific campaign and how did that end up in one and lost and open. So we give you the opportunity also to show you what uh, effect you had on revenue. So there's a lot of options here to really document and detail the uh, reports. Now, as I said before, there's more than 100 standard reports. And these are just four of them. So naturally, there's also all of these standard email reports where you can drill down into click-through rates on specific emails or product groups and all of these different things. So to sum this up, um, we build digital profiles, identifying both the digital behavior and the data that's needed from different systems, integrating that into one plat platform. We use that to create target and segments. We use the communication engine through cross-channel to personalize it both on channels and on, on content. We use the lead scoring engine to really qualify and generate leads automatically to sales. And we use the analytics engine to really document the effect of what's being, uh, of what's really being run. So as you can see, this is really a powerful tool to, uh, to align sales and marketing and change the way that we communicate with our customers. So if you're in a situation today where you struggle with data quality in marketing, you might have manual processes exporting uh, content from CRM platforms, putting that into your email engine um, or email service provider. You might have issues with generating leads that you're sending on spreadsheets to sales. Um, maybe you're actually in the process of developing a churn retention program or you know you have to design the customer lifecycle like I showed you before then marketing automation is definitely a thing you should consider. And it does not start uh, with huge amount of money. It depends on actually what is huge amount of money. Um, but you can get started small and grow from there. Um, what we see most uh, companies actually engaging with in the beginning is start to define the customer life cycle that uh, we discussed in the, in the beginning, right? Let's just scroll on back. I'll go back to this one. So start to define the initial customer uh, journey because when we have this in place, we know what data is needed. And by having this in place, you can also identify what sort of technology do I actually need. Now, we have a set of standard workshops that we use to run these uh, and design these uh, customer journeys. And it is not a big task. It does not have to be a three-month project with thousands of uh, euros invested in in, uh, in PowerPoint slides and, uh, and nice uh, content deliveries. It is really about identifying the high level and identifying what data do we need to really drive this, um, drive this forward. And RI on these projects um, are often within inside 12 months if we do this the right way from the beginning. So um, as a part of these uh, projects, we also help building the, uh, build the business case. What is your customer lifetime value? How many new customers can we generate? How many uh, old customers can we reactivate? And those different things. So uh, usually we engage in a what we call a business discovery workshop where we identify the overall customer journey and help you build a business case um, for a project like this. And we have models to, uh, to, support, uh, to support all of that. So with that said, guys, uh, 10.45 is my clock. And I promised that we would be done by 10.45. So I think that's, that's a pretty good hit, right? <laughs> I hope it, um, it kind of made the sense for you guys. I'm just going to scroll over to the end slide as I jumped a little bit back and forth here. Here we go. So um, as I mentioned before, uh, if you have any questions, and Ulf, I haven't forgotten yours. Uh, if you have any, um, uh, any um, uh, questions, please feel free to just uh, type it back. Um, I'm, uh, I'll be on the call for quite some time. And if you uh, find this interesting, we would uh, be more than happy to take an individual meeting with you guys and, uh, and try to explain to you how can you drive a uh, project like this. No cost uh, associated. Uh, just reach out to us and uh, we'll set up a uh, meeting where we will have um, where we will have um, you know an initial dialogue on how could your journey start out? Is the business discovery workshop the right, the right thing to start with, or should we uh, you know just uh, find find prices and get going? Or you know, what would your journey uh, look like? Um, and naturally, it has to take into consideration your specific business needs. So feel free to uh, ask any questions if you have. Unless uh, you don't have any, then we're more or less done with the. Uh, presentation and uh, yeah as I mentioned I'm uh, I'm here to take some questions if you have any 
And Ulf, if you could uh, elaborate a little bit more on the question you raised, I'm not sure I quite understood uh, what you meant by that. Otherwise, we can also take it offline afterwards if it's a if it's more of a um, longer communication. All right, guys. I'm not sure if you're still online, Ulf, but uh, I'm, I'm not quite, quite sure what you meant with your question. So um, also feel free to uh, to reach out to me uh, directly, and we can have a dialogue off the uh, the webinar. Okay, guys. It doesn't seem like there's uh, any questions today. So. Uh, Thank you all for joining. I hope you uh, got some inspiration. Um, and as I mentioned in the beginning, we will uh, have the next webinar in, I think it's about three, four weeks from now, where we will dive into more details on, uh, I think it's on lead scoring, actually, uh, you know how lead scoring models can be set up or else it's personalization. I, I seem to forget right now. But uh, if you're on our newsletter list, then you will uh, receive the invitation. And uh, I hope to see you on the, on the next one. So have a fantastic day, guys, and uh, speak to you soon.